Hello my friends, in this lecture you're gonna learn lots of very interesting stuff like for example signals like creating area that we detect our player and it will make him die so very fun right? Dying is fun <laughs> especially in games because without the feature like dying the game is just well boring right? Okay so how do we do such things that when enemy right enemy is coming on to this guy I want the player to die, right? I want to do like something like that, that when there is gonna be a zone here, an area around the goblin, and this area is like close to our player, I want the player to die. And to be honest, I would like to also make this area like this, so when it's on, for example, a trap or on another enemy that is bigger or smaller, to work properly too, right? Not only in situation like for example here. So to make it a universal solution that will work always, right? We need to create something what is called for example kill zone, kill area, right? It's gonna be an area that's gonna detect when the player comes onto something that it, is gonna kill him. We're gonna start from creating a scene and we're not gonna choose 2D scene as the base of our root node, but we're gonna choose other node and find here something what is called area 2D. As you can see, area 2D is a space that detects other collision object to this entering or exiting it. Okay, so this is a place that's gonna just detect things. Okay, area, a zone for detecting. I'm gonna change the name of it to kill zone because this area is also gonna kill things. And now we need to specify how big this area is. And we specify it, as you can see, we have exclamation mark here using collision shape 2D or collision polygon 2D. So control plus A, let's choose collision shape 2D and hit create. And now we need to specify like a default shape that is gonna be attached to any kill zone that we attach to it. And to be honest, I, I will do something like that, for example, but you can change it later, don't worry. I will show how, and to be honest, most people do not know how to change it, even though we have specified something like that here. That's pretty fun. So we have kill zone with a default collision shape to D. And now remember that this collision, this is very important. This is not something that is going to collide with player like it's gonna push it, right? Because the kill zone is area 2D. It is not a static body 2D that you can't pass through, for example, right? It is just area, okay? So this is only area, remember, zone and we can now attach it to enemy. How to do it? We choose the enemy scene and hit this thing here or control shift plus A and let's find kill zone. As you can see, we have got it here now, but it looks the same as collision shape. And to be honest, I really don't like it. So when I go to the kill zone, I can change the color of it. Okay. How to change color of it? You can go to canvas item, visibility, and here you can change, for example, it to something like that. The most important thing for me is that now when I choose any scene, I can see that, okay, this is kill zone, right? And this is the default collision shape of that enemy. And this part only is gonna kill the player. So we attach it here, but remember, we can attach kill zone to any type of enemy right now. We can attach it also to traps and then we can change the shape of it. But how? Almost nobody knows that, that you can click here and now hit on editable children. And then when you choose the collision shape, you can change it to the specific problem you are having, right? So this is just a default kill zone here, okay? This is a default one, but you can easily now 
do even a different shape, right? You can say, hey, yeah, I want to use rectangle in this situation. And this is gonna still keep working. As you can see here, we have a default one in the kill zone, but here we change it to the rectangle and it's okay. So you can make it like, you know, different. It's up to you, right? You can use the default option if you want, right? But you don't need to, okay? So it really depends on the situation you have. In our case, uh, well, we can delete it and use the default one, but just take in mind that, yes, you can, you can do it this way, right? Okay, so we have a kill zone that by default is like that. Uh, let's make it a bit bigger by default. Let's detect a player that's gonna go into the kill zone. So when we play our game, we want like, hey, this guy went into him. And to be honest, to make it easier to spot, let's do it this way. So as you can see, oh, this is the time when this circle goes into this circle. I want to detect this situation. How do we do such things in Godot? When we go to the kill zone and choose the area 2D, we have something like here, a tab that is called node. And here we have something what is called signals. The different name for this could be events. So when an event happen, we want to signal, which means inform about that it happened. So when something enters this, so when body, when any body enters it, and one of the body can be what? Our player, for example, right? Then I want to be informed. And when I double click it, connect, as you can see, we do not have script that we can connect it to. It's because we didn't attach any script to Killzone. So first, let's create a script. Let's put it into a scripts folder. And now when we go to Killzone again and go to node and choose the body entered and then connect, as you can see, we connected this. Now when I click here, I will always open this part of code. As you can see now, when I go, for example, to Killzone, write this, I will open this here, right? I can even, for example, close it, right? <laughs> I close it totally. So let's find it. <laughs> uh, this was kill zone, right? And now when I, let's, let's say that I am player, right? And I hit this, as you can see, I open this instantly, right? And this is the place where we need to put a code that will like do stuff when body enters the kill zone. So let's remove this part here, the pass, which means that just doesn't have any code right now. And let's print here. So let's print here on the output that it happened. So for example, you entered me. <laughs> and now when we run our program, Ram, look here in the output. As you can see, we have two times you entered me, even though I have not entered them. <laughs> Why? Because, well, they entered different bodies, like for example, tree. Notice that when they come near the tree, as you can see, we have entered here. And when I come into them, <laughs> uh, enter them, as you can see, it happens, but, and also it happens only once, which is good, but it shouldn't happen to other things. It should happen. It should only affect who our player. And this is pretty hard to solve problem. How do we do this? How do we detect only player? Notice that we have got here something what is called on body entered. Body means that look player right now, when we try to change the type of it, it is character body. So it is detected when you go to tree, notice that the type of this guy is what a static body to did. So it is also detected, but we want to attach like, you know, invoke this only when it enters the player. We could make here conditional statements that would, you know, check only for the player, but still executing any code just because, you know, on every possible body and there will be many bodies in our game is just loose of the computer time, right? <laughs> we should detect only something that is on the player layers. But wait, wait, what, what did I say now? Look, now it is probably one of the most important thing you're gonna learn in Godot, okay? 
When I go to the kill zone, notice that we have got here something like collision. And here we have layer and mask. Layer means where my kill zone is. Mask means what do I detect? So our layer is now currently on layer one, which is default layer. Everything is there. So let's go to the player for a second. Let's go into collision and let's say, hey, I want to be only on layer two. So it's different now. And also I will hit here on three dots and let's edit here. And let's say that it is the layer two is player. This is important because now when I move my mouse over here, I will have a hint. Okay, so this guy is on player layer and on the player is on layer two. Okay. And when I go back to kill zone, kill zone is on layer one, but right now it detects everything that is on layer one. Our player is not there. So let's do something like that. And let's hit number two because on layer two is our player. And now we're going to detect only player using kill zone, nothing else. And this solution is good because now we don't need to make any conditional statements here. So we don't need to make here like if the, if this is not a player, then blah, 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 blah. no, hey, this is gonna, de gonna only detect things on layer two and only player is there, right? So now as you can see, we do not see anything here on output, but when the player like enters this guy, well, this happened, right? And now we can decide what should exactly happen here, right? So for example, let's kill the player, right? And the player, the body that entered the kill zone is really inside this body variable here. So I could do something like that body and I can access now anything from our player. So when I hit that, I can do something like Q3, which means free remove the body from the game. Let's play the game. And as you can see now, it doesn't detect anything, right? And it doesn't kill our tree, for example. So everything is okay. But when I go into this area, as you can see, I died by also we've got an error. And why is that so? Because when we remove the body, it doesn't mean that our game stopped working. This thing is just freeing, which means it removes body from the game, right? And that body is our player. But we still have, uh, for example, in enemy, a GD script, things that work like code that is working on the player, right? But it doesn't exist. You can't work on something that doesn't exist. That's why we had an error, right? And that's why we should do something like that. In instance valid. So it means if the player exists, then, and I will just put all these things like that. So only if the player exists, then do all this stuff here. Otherwise don't do them. As you can see, it removed us from the game and well, you know, nothing is happening because we are just not anymore here. Camera can't find us. So it's back. We should show here, for example, game over and let the game reset. Maybe make it a bit red or something like that. It's up to us what we're going to do now. But we did what we wanted, right? We just killed the player. <laughs> Our game is starting to be fun, right? You have probably noticed that we wrote some code in this lecture. Normally we used AI. I did it and also I showed you how signals work and so on because you need to understand the process that happens behind the scenes. Otherwise you will not know what to ask for and well, you will not know where to click on to even if AI helps you. But notice that I asked create a kill zone scene that I can attach to places where the player will die immediately and I showed example between these things. So it knows that it is example. So after attaching a kill zone to an enemy, when the player encountered this space, it will cause the player to die. And I ask it, how could I code it, right? And only focus on dying part. So, so as you can see, it did the same. Node to D as the root. Well, it can be root node to D or it can be area to D. It depends on how you want to you know, put things up. Then the collision. Then we have got a script, right? Fourth collision detection. 
and we use the body enter signal, but it connected the signal inside the code. Why? Because, hey, it doesn't uh, have ways to, you know, edit things in your editor like we did, for example, in Killzone, we added signal from here, but you can do it also manually using code. OK, but uh, this thing is a bit better because you can you know easily see which signals are used from within your editor instantly and jump to them right so i like this approach more but you could ask it to you know how to attach this signal using for example editor and as you can see it checked if the player is in the group because the solution that i showed you for example here so i put the player on another layer is one of the solution that you can use and i think it's better in this situation because you don't need to make conditions later here that's gonna be executed right ai took approach like this it went into the player and put it here into something what is called a group and then if you attach it as a group so if you hit here plus and type here player group for example right then you can check if something is in this group and then make it die okay so this is also a good solution, but I prefer my solution in this situation. As you can see, it also made the player die from another place. Like it created function that makes the player die. And this is very good idea because, uh, well, you can put additional logic, which means additional code for player death, like game over, skis, sound effects that we're gonna talk about in next lecture, right? And as you can see, it, it really did everything and it said how to do things that I showed you in this lecture. So the conclusion is that, yes, you can use AI to learn coding because remember that I could now ask for each specific place here and do something like, could you explain this part as if I was 10 years old? And the explanation is gonna be amazing, right? AI is great for that, but without video tutorial like I did now, it's also very hard to, you know, ask for something AI because you don't know where to click things, right? And there are some features that are not shown by AI by default. Like for example, you don't know how to uh, change the collision shape to D from within the enemy or for example, trap. You not need to know that you need to hit editable children here. So in this lecture, you learned that area to D is what? It is a place that can detect, it is a zone area that can signal, inform using signals what happened to this area like for example oh body entered it oh here is body exited right so you could also detect if something exited this area right so it means that you can use it not for only killing zone you can use it for example for like tooltips so when the player comes near some kind of you know sign right and uh, when he comes near it you want to show up hint for him when he body exited right when he exits this place you want to show for example Nothing. <laughs> so you want to make it disappear. And this is powerful, right? When you understand the process behind, you can think of solutions, right? You can then check, for example, if AI had another idea for the solution like that, or you could uh, write the code for the specific part that you don't know exactly where to look for. This is powerful and very helpful. I hope you see it. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I am always happy to help. I love reading everything that you say.